Now we're going to get into Olama. We'll learn what Olama is and we will set this up on our machines so that it forms a viable alternative to OpenAI that we can use Google search for Olama. You're going to get olama.com. So this is basically the website we're talking about, O-L-L-A-M-A.com. This is a way for us to run large language models locally on our machines, right? Get up and running with large language models. So you can run a bunch of models like Llama3, Phi3, Mistral, Gemma2, and other models. You can also customize and create your own. This is going to take the place of OpenAI if you don't want to pay for OpenAI. You want a free solution. Instead of having the call go to OpenAI, you're gonna have it go to the Olama instance that's running on your machine, okay? You can click on download and it'll download an installer on your machine. There are installations available for Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. It didn't have for Windows for a while, but they've introduced it now. There is preview in parentheses, but I ha personally haven't had any problems running it on Windows, okay? I have a Windows custom PC. I run it on it all the time, and it works perfectly fine. Make sure you download this, all right? Now, on the website, you have this link called models at the top. Okay, these are all the models that you can download and install with Olama. Let me give you some context about what exactly Olama is in the first place and how does it work. Let's say you have to make an API call. You need to leverage some AI, some generative AI. The traditional way to do it, that something that we're all familiar with is using an open AI GPT API call. So there is a GPT endpoint, you're gonna make a call to this endpoint. That's usually how you do it, right? You make a call, you call this endpoint, and you give it the prompt, and you give it the instructions or whatever, it returns a response back, right? That's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is using Olama. So basically the way it works is, Olama runs on your machine. Let's say this is your machine. You're not gonna call the external endpoint. You're gonna run this on your machine. Olama, Olama is a program, okay? When you download and install Olama, you're running this program. There is a service that runs in the background, and there is also a CLI, right? A command line utility, okay? Now, what you can do with Olama is you can download a model and have Olama invoke the model in order to do inference, okay? Now, Olama can download a model file, okay? So there is a, an open source model or a set of family of models called Llama, okay? There is Llama 2, there's new Llama 3 that was introduced. So there's innovation that's happening in the open source space. I wouldn't say the quality is as good as OpenAI or Claude or all those commercial offerings. It depends. In some aspects it is better, some aspects it's not. It depends on your use case, okay? But in general, People generally say they prefer calling uh, GPT than running local models, but local models is an alternative, right? So it downloads a model file. You can say, Olama, download this model, okay? And then you can have it run this model. You can have it say, run this model, and then you can ask the Olama CLI or the Olama service a question, and it is going to use this model and give you back a response. So you, it's almost like you have a local endpoint that you can call. Instead of calling that, you're going to call this. I'm going to ask this and it's going to do this, right? So a model file is basically a thing which represents the large language model that you choose, okay? This is not an executable. You can't really run a model in that sense, okay? It's the Olama, which is the runtime. What Olama is doing is when you say run it, it basically loads it in memory. And when you ask Olama a question, it uses that model to provide a response, okay? You can choose another model file. You get this, download another model file, and then you say, Olama, I'm gonna use this. Olama calls this model. You say, run this one, and you're gonna ask a qu the same question. It's gonna use this model to give you the answer, okay? That's what Olama does. You're gonna download Olama, run it, so you have the application, 
And then you're gonna say, I want models, which is what we saw there, right? We saw a bunch of models here. So all these are models that you can download. You see here, Gemma 2 is a model that you can download and run. Llama 3 is another model. Quen 2 is another model. Download the model and then say, oh Llama, go use this model to give me inference and it's going to do that, okay? So it's not just one like you would have with, even with OpenAI, you have multiple models, right? You can use GPT-3, GPT-4.0, all that stuff. So it's like that. You can download the model file, it runs it locally. You can turn off the internet and you can have full conversations with this model and nothing goes outside your machine. Okay, this is the benefit of open source. This is what we're gonna do now. Another benefit of Olama is that it mimics the OpenAI API, right? This is an API. You can have a REST API, you can make a REST API calls and it's gonna return the inference result as a REST API response, right? The same API contract is mirrored by Olama locally. The only thing that changes is the server name, right? Instead of calling the OpenAI server, you're gonna call localhost colon, the Olama port, and you can, all the code that you would normally write to interface with OpenAI will now work with Olama and running on local models, right? Now we can see why this is useful. But you can either say, okay, I'm gonna have my endpoint call OpenAI, or I can redirect it to call the Olama endpoint and everything else remains the same. The only thing that you change is the server name, right? That's the difference here and that's the benefit of using Olama. So let's download this. So when you, I already have it downloaded, so I'm just gonna run it. When you download it, you will get a service that you can install, all right? So I'm just gonna run Olama. You see there is an app here. And you will have an app on the start menu on Windows as well. So you run Olama, there'll be this thing that sits in the top here. You see the tree icon, it's a service that's running. And it gives you a greeting message, welcome to Olama, click next. Here is the command line that you can install. There are two parts to it, I told you. One is the service that runs, which provides that endpoint. And second is a command line that you can use for interacting with Olama in locally. So I'll click install into the password. And then you see here, here is a prompt, Olama, run, and then the name of the model. Okay, when you say Olama, run, and the model name, it'll see if it already has that model downloaded, All right? Here are two models that are downloaded. If it's there, it's just gonna load that in memory and use it. If it doesn't exist, it's gonna fetch it from the internet and save it on your machine. All right, so let's, let's run this thing. We go to terminal and let's do Olama, run. Llama 3 is a recent model, which is supposedly pretty good. So I'm just going to copy that same prompt and, and run it. Olama, run, Llama 3, okay? Again, to just so, there, there are a lot of llamas here. So just so you understand, the Olama part is the CLI that we just downloaded. This is the thing that provides that inter interface, that interaction. Llama 3 is the model that gets downloaded, okay? Now when I hit enter, it notices that Llama 3 does not exist, so it is actually downloading it. There are some parallels to Docker. If you're familiar with Docker, it's similar to that, right? When you ask Docker to run an instance of an image and that image doesn't exist, it pulls it from the registry, right? It's very similar to that, right? It's, the concept is the same, even though the technology is very different. The concept is you ask it to run a model, that model doesn't exist, it down, downloads it from, from the internet. And these models tend to be pretty big. So you see here, this one's a 4.7 gigabyte model. And this is the smaller model. This is eight, I think the eight, 8 billion parameters is around 4.7 gigabytes. So it depends on how many parameters the model has. The more the parameters of the model, the more its reasoning capabilities, right? There are 70 billion parameter models which are not significantly better, but they're slightly better than 8 billion. So this one's 8 billion. And it is on the lower end of the kind of models that we have available. There are 2 billion, 3 billion parameters, which aren't that great. But if that's all in the memory you have, that's what you live with. So it's uh, finished downloading and no, not quite. Okay, there are multiple layers to the manifest. It's downloading all of them, verifying SHA to make sure it downloaded properly. Now, it gives me an interface 
where I can actually talk to it. So you see that? There is a prompt here, and this is the Olama prompt. I can interface with it just like I'm talking to Chat GPT or OpenAI or all those other things. This is running entirely locally, right? I can ask it a question. Why is the sky blue? And it is going to use the local model to provide this inference. Not bad, huh? No internet. Now I can turn off my Wi-Fi or my internet. I obviously can't do that now because I'm live streaming, but you can do this. And you basically have something which has the knowledge of the world, the knowledge of the internet running on your machine. You can ask it whatever you want and it has all of that knowledge baked into it. It has all this knowledge and you can do this without um, making a call to the internet. This is running entirely locally. Now, not only does it do this, it also has, like I said, an endpoint. Let's switch to that. Let's go here to docs. This should be documentation somewhere. Docs is here. Interesting. All right. API reference. All right. There is, there are endpoints for making API, generating a completion, generating chat completion. So you see this post slash API slash chat. This is exactly the same as an open AI endpoint. The structure, the payload, and the slash API slash chat, I think slash API slash chat is one, or maybe it's there's a different one and it's mirroring both, but it does mimic the open AI endpoint. So all the code that you would use for connecting to open AI, you can use for this and it runs entirely locally. And that's what we're gonna use, right? And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make this change. This will show up in the, when we're looking at the code, but here is, I don't know if this is big enough, but basically this is my conversation service and I'm using this to, hopefully this is visible. I'm using this as a service for generating messages from the profiles, okay? I'm using this to get back a response and I'm making a call to OpenAI. I'm using a service that is OpenAI Chat Client. This is available for me because of Spring AI, right? Spring AI is a dependency in my project, all right? I have uh, Spring AI Olama Spring Boot and then Spring AI OpenAI Spring Boot. These are dependencies in my project. So I have added them in my project so I can use the Spring AI frameworks. And here I have this thing that gets dependency injected in my code. If you're confused, don't worry, this will be clear when I'm coding through this, right? This is how anybody would make a call on, from a Spring application. You can have AI calls happen from your code by doing this, okay? Now, I'm using OpenAI chat client because that's my choice for these responses. What I showed you is using OpenAI. Let's say I want to change to Olama. All I need to do is change this to Olama chat client. That's it. Of course, I'm gonna have to change the constructor because this is what's getting dependency injected, right? Into my service, right? The same spring concepts that we're all familiar with, but now it's using AI, right? It's using a service which does this stuff. Now, just with this one change, I've basically switched the service from making a call to open AI to making a call to Olama. It's all running locally. If you want to run, if you only run Olama to run pre-trained model locally, will it require GPU? Not really. It depends on the model. There are models which run on CPU as well. There are different model formats that you can use. And uh, there is a model format container called GGUF, which is which uses CPU for inference. So if you, you can use a smaller model and you can use CPU and you can run it, you can run it on your MacBook. I have a MacBook, which is, I think the first generation M1 laptop. So if you have newer MacBooks, it can work better. For Windows, you probably have some kind of a GPU. Like we have a four gig uh, RAM, four gig uh, video memory or eight gig video memory, you should be able to generate, you should be able to run uh, local models easily.